Um, we're here from all over the world. Today I am in DC. So those of you just coming in, a lot, um, you may hear some background noise, but I'm terribly sorry for that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and begin. We're going to talk about career development, about curriculum decays, resumes, and e-portfolio tips. Now, a lot of things that I have done are um, online, so I will share with you those sites. But before I begin that, I think it's really important to look at the differences between the different types of ways that you can get hired. So last week we did talk about finding a job, finding a job teaching as an English language teacher all over the world. And no matter where you apply in, the, how to evaluate those jobs, that was part of last week's session. So if you want to go back, you can go back and look at the archives. The recording is already up and you can watch that. So today we're going to talk about once you find those jobs, you narrowed it down to a list of five or ten jobs, and you say, these are the jobs I want to teach English, well, how are you going to sell yourself? And that's the thing about being an English language teacher, and in a lot of jobs in general, is that maybe we're really great teachers, but maybe we're not very good at kind of marketing ourselves or, or selling ourselves. And in a way, that's what you have to do. I really love this quote. Um, and it, the author is unknown, but it says it's not who you are that holds you back. It's who you think you're not. And the thing about when you're applying to a job and when you're applying to be a language teacher and all of these positions, you have to put your best self out there. It's not bragging. It's not saying, I am this, I am that. It's you saying, these are the things that I am capable of doing, that I believe that I can do. So even those little highlights, those little experiences, even if they're like volunteer experience, or maybe they're just that you do this as a small portion of this in your job, because a lot of our jobs, we've done many, many, many different things. So if you've done that and you feel like, yes, I can do this, then go ahead and put it in your CV, your e-portfolio, or your resume. Because if you feel confident you can do that, then you should be saying, this is what I can do. So definitely put your best foot forward. And research has shown throughout uh, for dating. I, I, I study a lot of like business and uh, magazines and psychology today and, and different types of psychology. And it doesn't matter whether it's dating or whether it's a job position, the number one thing that people look for that really gets you the job, that really distinguishes you, what kind of characteristics do you think that would be? Anyone want to pose a guess in the chat box? What is that one thing that you have to have that will pretty much get you the job? Either than somebody else who may not have that. Like, who do they tend to hire? What would that be? Okay, Chia says wit. Bogey says ambition. Those are good. And Ella is the winner. Confidence. Confidence is the number one um, trait that really attracts people. So these are things to keep in mind when you are presenting yourself there. So the first thing you want to do is you want to do your research about any job because that's going to distinguish you as well. And the other things that are mentioned, openness to learn and ambition and wit, all of these are really great traits to have as well. But when you're presenting yourself on paper, you really have to have this um, confidence. You have to sell yourself and say, I'm very confident that I can do this. Because that's what it, uh, you're, it's a new relationship established. It's you going into this position and they don't really know you. They don't know your background or anything like that. So they have to see this confidence from the things that you submit, the paper resumes, the online portfolio, and they, they, with the confidence they say, if that person believes that this, they can do this job, then that's who we want to hire because they're going to be the ones that go out there and they're going to do a great job. But if you're not very confident, then they're not going to be confident in hiring you and thinking that you can handle that. So that's why confidence is that. So do your research. Find out what it is that the company does. Find out what it is that um, makes them different. So that way when you do have this on paper, you can pinpoint those traits exactly. Find out their mission statement. 
if you do a Google search and you look at their website, then you'll be able to see what their philosophy is, what their mission statement is. If you're connected on social media, ask the workers there, say, what is a typical day? What do you talk about in the meeting? You know, do they go over the mission points? Do they go over a few points? How does the boss conduct the meeting? You can find out a lot by the way they conduct meetings regularly of what they're going to expect from you. So it's good to do your research in very different avenues. Check their stock market. See how they're doing on the stock market. See where their visions are, where they want to go, read articles. All of that is really great for studying you know, what to put in your resume or your CV. First point, how do you come across on paper? Because a lot of jobs, it's still paper-based. You still have to send a cover letter. You still have to send a resume or a curriculum to take. So paper is kind of one of those mediums that it's really kind of difficult to sell yourself to come across as confident. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's talk about it. So first of all, um, you probably have to send a cover letter or an email. These days you send your cover letter through an email. This is the format that I have. This is kind of like a basic format from some of the job positions that I've applied for. Um, so one of the things that I do is, of course, there's a definite format. So you do want to follow the format. You have a date, uh, the name of the person receiving this. Try to make sure that it's a specific person that you are sending this to. Um, try to find the name, um, the address of the institution, and then dear Mr. or Sir or someone like that. Dear Bethany Tagnall. <laughs> I'll use Bethany as an example here. <laughs> um, and then here's basically the general way that it comes across. I am writing to apply to the position as whatever the position is. I am currently working as list what you're currently doing, and then expand on these. These aren't just fill in the blank. These you can expand on. This is very, very important part of the next step. I believe my demonstrated skills, talent, blah, 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 make me a strong candidate for this position. So in this particular fill in the blank, you want to really sell yourself there. You want to say what it is specific skills. My demonstrated skills in if you're sending this as an email, then say it's presenting. If it's presenting, put a link on it so that way they can click the link. You would be surprised how many people don't add this inside their email. But whoever is reading this is going to be curious because you're going to be one of the few people who put the link to a slide, to a video, to, um, to some kind of review of your demonstrated skills. So if you're really great at developing websites, then put a link to a website that you develop. If you're really great at making a presentation, then put a link to a presentation, that, a PowerPoint or something that you're really proud of, a presence that you really are proud that you created. Um, and that will differentiate you from somebody else. They'll remember that. They'll say, hey, I saw Bob presentation on something versus somebody else who may be a strong candidate for the job. I think this is really important for non-native English speaking teachers as well. And this is one of the things that I like to tell not as native English speaking teachers. Create a one minute video of you speaking, how you really love. And the reason I say one minute is because people will watch a one minute video. But this gives the, the, the thing about a non-native English speaking teacher is a lot of times, yes, jobs will assume you don't have the proper English skills. But if you're presenting and they see your personality and they see that you do have those English skills, then that's going to help you get into the competition. They're going to say, well, this person obviously is a great teacher, has a great personality, is going to be dynamic in the classroom, so we'll want to hire them. So this is something that you should do so that way you just don't assume they're not going to hire me because I'm a non-native English speaker. Put that video, what's it going to hurt you? <laughs> um, so, and then, so that's the part you want to fill out for that. It's very important. Um, I will, oh, this is another really important part. This is where your research comes in. I will improve your institution by how? Well, this is where your research comes in. You know the mission statement is that they want to get more classes or something like that. 
then, then give them specific examples and don't be so general, say, because I am one of these people. Like for example, in my last position, when I, was, I moved to Germany from America and I had to apply for a job and I said one of the ways that I will improve your institution is by creating diverse classes and getting more classes um, in this area, in that area, in this area. And that is something that I accomplished within my time there. I created seven new courses, and this was a goal that I had put for the institution. And they loved it, getting them more uh, associated with technology. So these are different kind of things you can do. Developing a cultural program. A lot of English language institutes don't have programs where their students get to meet and greet and stuff like that. So these are all added ideas that you can add to the institution so that way you can be a better candidate over somebody else. So tell them how you will do this and then maybe the skills that you have that, um, that give you this kind of way to be able to do it. My resume and e-portfolio will highlight. Well, this is where, okay, you're telling them these are the three or four points. They say in a presentation, people walk away with three or to five points at the most. So you want to give them three or five points that you're saying. This is what I want you to zone in, in my portfolio, because really what they're going to do is they're going to go, see, I am in a cafe, you can see, because I have this and this. But let's, uh, let's say that you have, uh, this is your resume, okay? So what they're going to do is they're going to get your resume, and they're just going to scan it, because that's what I do. If they're going to take one minute, they're going to scan it. But if you say, this is what I want you to highlight in my resume, then they're going to, or in my curriculum decay, then they're going to pay attention to those parts. And it just won't be kind of this noise that's like, blah, 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 blah. It'll actually stand out more. And then you want to say some more things that you have additionally. Moreover, I have, what did you do at your last institute? Did you create a program? Did you, um, did your beginner students rise to a certain level? Did you have 90% past the IL, highlight those special skills. And then you do want to include your teaching philosophy. You want to say what you believe in. I really believe on hands-on learning. I believe that my students need to be exposed to different accents. I believe in them collaborating, Skyping with students in other country. Uh, different things that you really, really um, have done that you think differentiate you as a teacher. What is your philosophy and approach to teaching? And be passionate about it. Don't go on forever. The cover letter, the email should be something about a page long. So keep that in mind. But you do want to show that you're very passionate about your job and you take your job very seriously. Um, and that will exude on paper. Um, the passion that you write in it will really make you stand out. So don't make it so bland. Um, Mike said something like, it's essential that it's laid out well, consistent font of paper. Very, yes, Mike, and I didn't even present that. But don't get fancy. Do not use Calmic Sans. Um, use something that's Verdana, something that, and that's another thing to, to keep in mind. Around the world, not all fonts are going to be Times New Roman, Arial. Keep it simple because if you get very, very fancy, if you get these colored backgrounds, they might actually not be um, compatible on the computer. They may not be able to read your, your, your curriculum vitae or your cover letter or your email. So yes, it's good to keep consistent font, basic, and and I say keep it basic, the, the fonts and, and the format and things like that. Don't get fancy with that. Get Put your passion in it and, and have that be what's kind of the unique and fancy part of it. Include the link. Include and close is mine. Whatever you enclose, your recommendation letters, um, your portfolio, if they ask for a portfolio, your cover letter, um, your curriculum vitae, your resume, depending what the institution wants. And then from blah, 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 make sure when you get the recommendation letters, it is from people in the field that have actually done really great things and are your mentors in the field um, because that will look much better. If you need more information, please contact me at blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Okay, so this is where we go. CV or resume. In the U.S., I had to do resumes. And resumes are completely different from curriculum details. 
when I went to Germany, when I went to, um, um, I also taught in Greece, um, they required curriculum vitae a lot. Of, when I was teaching in um, Turkey, I applied for a job in Turkey, the same thing, a curriculum vitae. So you get to decide a curriculum vitae or a resume. What are the differences? Well, well, first of all, what should you include in both? In both, include volunteer work. It's really, really very important to include other things that you have done, professional membership. Are you a member of, uh, for example, Tisa France? Are you a member of BioTapel? Are you a member of American TESOL or TESOL? Have you attended webinars for American TESOL and you have the certificates? You can put this on your resume, um, that these are courses that you've attended because you can even show them the, the certificates that you download after viewing these. Languages learned, that's very important as an English language teacher. They want to see that you took the time to actually learn about other cultures because that makes you a better teacher. That means that you understand that your students, what it is their struggle, you have been in their shoes before. What kind of special skills? Are you great at technology? Are you really good at public speaking? Are you good at creating presentations? Are you great at training for CERT IBET or whatever it is that you're trying to do? If you are, for example, um, this I come across, I go to different countries around the world, and then there are teachers that teach aviator English, or they teach something like doctor's English, or they teach lawyer's English. And, and, and they don't have the background, that, or they don't really prove that they have that experience. And I think that experience is important. So if you're doing something like you're training aviators, um, or you're training doctors or something, put those skills. Well, I used to volunteer at doctors at, you know, Poland or something like that. And I used to help them with their English or something like that. So that way it shows that you have a special background. You just didn't go online and take a course and you're certified for it. You actually have the background. So I think that's really important. Um, awards, any kind of awards that you uh, received, whether or not you were the highlighted speaker at IATEPL or something like that, or TESOL. Um, if you created an online course and you train, any of those are really great on your um, curriculum vitae or your resume. Any publication, even if it's a free ebook. When I first started out, that was something that I did. I started creating an ebook. First of all, it was, it's actually because I needed um, packages. I always had to create these packages or something to go home when I was doing my training workshop. So I said, I'll just do an ebook because if I do an ebook, it's just much easier. But now I actually put that on my curriculum vitae and my resumes as well. I say, this is my publication. Yes, it wasn't published by a professional author, but you know what? 20,000 people have downloaded it and believe that this is a really inter important information package. So things like that, um, put them there and put a link to them. A lot of times they will access the link. Um, any possessions that you held, were you the treasurer of this? Were you the curator of this? Um, anything like that, that's important as well. This is what a resume looks like. And I'm going to show you the differences because I remember when I was going to get a job in um, Germany, I didn't know the format. I, I had to ask a lot of questions. I did lots and lots of research. I, I didn't know the difference between a curriculum vitae and a resume. So I want to show you this quite quickly. A resume is going to have your name at the top. It's going to have information like your phone number, your email, your address. You have to put an objective, like a mission statement. Um, here, mine is to obtain a challenging opportunity in an educational environment, will utilize and expand my purpose, and blah, blah, blah. So it's like a one-liner, something that just kind of shows what you want to do. Your education, your professional experience, your skills, um, things like that. The CV. Well, the CV is, is a lot different. It's way different. The resume. I think it's less personal. They, they want it a bit more professional. You're not going to include your marital status. You're not going to include a picture. It, it, it's much different than a curriculum vitae. A curriculum vitae will have like a photo often. You have to attach a photo. That's not weird. It's something that is actually part of it. Your marital status, they'll often ask you. Sometimes they'll even ask you if you have children. Um, that's something that you you put. In Germany, that is something that was common. Your age, this was also something common in Germany that I, I had to do. 
I asked people um, ahead of time because I, I wasn't sure. I thought, wow, this is really personal. But yes, this is stuff that you included. And they may ask you for other private information as well. But sometimes um, that's with half what happened. <laughs> um, now, in different companies, it's different. That, um, Bethany said that in France, it's technically illegal, but they'll ask anyway. And then uh, Mike says that in Germany, that's more in Germany, but in the UK, it's not. So it depends on the com country. I would research. I actually went on um, the different research sites on that particular country, like for Germany, and I looked it up. And then I saw all of them, and then I, I, I went and I, I researched to see what they were putting in. Um, so don't be afraid to do that because that will give you a lot of background information on what to do. My curriculum vitae looks a little like this. It looks bland, of course, because I use simple fonts and everything. Um, but the fonts in making it fancy or a fancy format is never what got me the job. What got me the job was basically putting all these other extras that I told you, like the micro skill that Saeed was talking about earlier. Um, Okay, so I put my education forefront, and usually that is something that they want you to show. They want to see you have what certificates, your CELTA, your DELTA, your TEFL, what is it that you have that's related to the job, your IBET, your CERT IBET or <laughs> CERT ICT or something. What is it um, that you have that makes you uh, marketable for this job? Your, so the education I have found is really important in a lot of jobs now. It used to not be. A lot of times, um, it was just whether or not you spoke English well or something. But now, it is very important to have your certification. Your teaching experience, um, that's really important as well. They want to see what you have done. So even if it's volunteer, again, add it. So now we're going to go to tips, research other CVs and resumes online. Um, Monster.com, I think, is international. LinkedIn is international. Um, there's a lot, find what it is that networking site that is in that country that people go on, like the LinkedIn of that country, and then research what their CVs. A lot of people will have their CVs out there in these hiring sites. So actually go on one of these hiring sites, even if it's just to see what it is that people are sending for the different positions. And not all the time will you find it in your position. So for example, don't be so specific. When I was looking to be an English language teacher in Germany, I didn't find resume, I mean a CV for that. So what I looked at was just general teaching, and then I, I framed it off of that. Now online. So many of you, this is selling yourself on paper, but online is really important as well. So I'm going to show you a few sites really quick about where um, you can find some great ways to sell yourself online. And for that, I'm going to ask some of you uh, to actually post your place. Because I know my Kogan has this really fantastic online about me page. That's one of the ones I'm going to talk about. So Mike, feel free to share or anybody who has an online portfolio. Online portfolios are really important. And this is why it's important. Because companies now, they Google you. They will research your background. They want to know why, what you've been, your digital trail. And it's really important what Jared Thorpe says. We are all leaving digital trails behind us as we make our way around our individual lives. So whatever it is you have out there, you have your Facebook, you have your Google, you have whatever, that's going to show up. Twitter shows up all the time when people Google me. Um, I've had friends, actually. I, and this is a true story. I had a friend that was applying as a lawyer. He went in for the job, and they said, my MySpace page, it's great that you have a band. And my friend was very surprised. He didn't realize as soon as he sat down, this is what they told him. So these are things that you have to keep in mind, that they will Google you. They'll do a background research on yourself. Google yourself. Bing yourself. Put yourself in all the situations. Find out what it is that they're going to find out and start making a positive footprint. Start getting your your presentations online. Start getting your webinars like these online, your blog posts. Have something online <laughs> that's positive, that shows your good side. So what should you include? Well, include videos. Um, I think videos are very dynamic. A lot of times it'll give them paper and even online presence. It's 
not that face to face. It's not them being able to see you and your personality. So a one minute video is so important. A small video, two minutes. They did research and they found that most people will watch a two to five minute video and that's max. Um, there are about, um, I think a billion videos watched every single day on YouTube. The average user will watch 15 minutes a day of YouTube videos. So post something on YouTube. Make a video out there. Put yourself out there so they can see your personality and they can get to know you and it personalizes it for them and they'll remember you. Put your slide presentation. I think SlideShare, I'm going to go ahead and put that link, but SlideShare is fantastic. A lot of people use it. It gets your name out there. Um, I have had, actually, the way that I, this is a true story, that um, American people approached me was I had a, vi a video. I actually did, a, I was doing it for the VRT, the Virtual Roundtable Free E-Conference, and it was a, a Pecha Kucha. And what I did was, it was, a, what was it, survival tips for teaching kids English. So I put my video up there. And this is now why I'm your host in American Peaceful, because I put a very short Pecha Kucha video online. Um, it was actually a Presto, something that Heike Silk created. It's three minutes and 20 seconds. And this is, they just contacted me. Um, Jonathan saw me and he said, Shelly, would you like to be the hostess for American People? So you never know where those videos are going to lead. <laughs> um, a lot of slide presentations have got me workshops booked, so a lot of times I'll put the slide shares up there. and It's a great resource for other people as well. Bogey, that's a very good uh, question. Bogey asks, do you think reference letters are so important? Yes, I do, especially depending who it's from. Um, then it can be something that really, for example, uh, one of the people that I have to really give a celebration for and kudos to is Barbara Sakamoto. Barbara has in the past written recommendation letters for me and when I was looking for teaching jobs and, and, and who I would, I really thought who would write my reference letter and, and I thought Barbara has such vast experience, she has all this experience, she's written books and this was something one that I really admired and who helped me along the way. And so um, I think it's really important. She wrote a great one. But think about who. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be your director or someone like that. But someone in the field, maybe who's published, who does a lot of uh, good work, someone who's the head of an organization, somebody who you feel has really mentored you. Um, put any publications up. Um, I put my ebook up so people can see that online. Any accolades. For example, I'll show you in a little bit, but I did a blue box, and it slides, and the blue box is a slide, it's screenshot of what people have said about my webinar. When people, for example, are on Twitter, I needed to capture what they said. Shelly, this presentation was amazing or something. I screenshot it, and I put it on a slide share so they can see the testimonial. Putting any interviews, um, a clear decline, um, two, he does all the time at Excel to Climb. He's always doing interviews with people. See if, you know, maybe Chu will do one for you. Or um, people are always looking to interview English language teachers. They do interviews um, for ELT chat. We always look for teachers. Put that online. Get yourself, even if it's not video, even if it's just like an audio recording, say, hey, I'll volunteer to do a video. Because that way, your name is out there and it's something that distinguishes you. Project samples, if you've created a project in any way online. For example, you did an online evo course um, or, or maybe you did a, a wiki. Put these snapshots, screenshots somewhere. Let them be able to access this. One of the places that I love um, is a free resource to put an online and look the most professional in my opinion, this is for like a CV, is visualcv.com. You can go to my mine is actually, um, I think it's, and this gets lots of hits. A lot of companies will actually, um, as well, browse through these. It gives you a quick summary. You can print it as a PDF, and, but what it does is it allows you to put your videos in, so it highlights all your links, your company size. A summary, the highlights of the great things that you have done. Below the summary is your work experience, your certifications. All, it looks like a 
professional TV. Your um, slide shares, you can put your ebook. This is an ebook right here. So it lets you attach all of it. It's beautiful in its simplicity. And a lot of companies think that this is just a really great place um, as far as the curriculum, the tay or a resume. It works really well. A lot of times I'll send this um, instead of doing my regular CV. And companies and, and places like it, they'll accept it because it's very professional. I believe this is where you can find mine. <laughs> and recently it was sponsored, so I don't think it's going to go anytime soon. Flavors.me is another one. I like this particular one myself. Um, this one actually highlights my blog. It puts the most recent post automatically. This is a feed form. You see me in the background. It says my name. It gives in my LinkedIn, and so they can click on all of this. All of this is absolutely clickable. My YouTube, whatever the recent videos are, you don't have to necessarily put this. But this particular template is great. Below this, you'd see my tweets. You'd even see my Facebook status updates. Whatever social media I wanted fed in. Every time you go to my flavors.me page, that you'll see this. Um, so I think the flavors.me is a really fantastic. It's free as well. So try flavors.me as well. Um, so these are more like online portfolio sites, but they're also online CV and resume. They highlight you. They're a great way to stay in a multimedia way that's catchy. This is who I am. It's easy to scan and it looks really, really great. The other one, about.me, and, and Mike, you can put your about.me. About.me looks very professional. The thing about about.me is that you had to wait for an invitation before. So I didn't get mine up. Uh, I don't know why, but they took forever to give me mine. You can put a nice background photo. You see how this person is very nice. Um, it has the regular photo. All of these are clickable links to their Facebook and everything like that. So it's it's really just uh, a way. You, and then you get to write a statement about yourself. This person here, this is for, he's a production manager and he's saying I'm a self-motivated person with a great personality and he just kind of gives you highlights. This is what I believe in. This is what, you know, and then he has here events, production. So you can make this, it's so simple but it has so much information. You can click on any of these and you can find more about this person. So these are things that will really set you apart from the pack. I definitely recommend LinkedIn and I don't know why I put about about me there but I think LinkedIn, there's a lot of professional groups. They're always showing you, um, for example, uh, in the group, they're always posting job positions or posting where you can find jobs. Um, so LinkedIn is really great. It gives you a really small heading. You can say exactly what you do. Mine says international speaker, author, teacher, trainer. Um, my area, e-learning. My current, I'm a faculty at blah, 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 the social community manager of um, and, and, and in the past. So it highlights everything. It's really simple, very professional. My Google profile. Um, I really like Google Plus. I think it's one of the great ways to get your students um, to start developing their digital footprint. But it's also a really nice portfolio. What I like is that it shows you different types of pictures. These pictures are the ones I chose to be up there. What do these pictures show about me? Well, over here you see me giving a workshop. Over here you see me doing a presentation where I look very passionate. <laughs> I think I do. You see me working with a student using a mobile device. Over here you see me doing another presentation. Here a very informal workshop. So when they see this, they say, look, this is what she's about. So you can put pictures up there that highlight the different areas that you do. Um, then right here, it gives a quick synopsis what you work out. Here it says, post this for American people. <laughs> um, it gives my, my last, the university where I attended college, uh, where I lived. I lived in Stuttgart, Germany. <laughs> and it highlights about my career. Also, people in my network, who I network with. So I think Google Plus is very good. Um, and Demetrius is right. Demetrius says being on Google Plus is really important because you generate a lot of Google search results, and that's absolutely true. When I Google my name, one of the first things that comes up is my Google Plus page. Um, and, and, and so it's something that is really
really great for positive football uh, footprint, digital footprint. Live binders. Now, I'm going to show you some sites that are really great for portfolio. Portfolio means showing your history of work, showing people these are the resources that I've created. Livefinders.com is where I put mine. You can go right now. It's a, a bit.ly address, but it's, uh, if you go to bit.ly, and a bit.ly is just a shortened URL. Um, you don't have to do that. You can use it. It's just because the only thing about live binders, so you can see mine right there. It comes in tabs. It looks like an online notebook. You have your name. All of these with clickable links. It basically gives a quick synopsis, real big summary of what I'm about, uh, things like that. I have an about me that kind of expands on this publication. And what it does is anything in this area, in the square area, is going to show the website. So it's embedded within it. You, they don't have to actually click and it goes to a different window. It actually comes in this window. So if you were to click this, it would actually show right here in the frame. So that's why I think it's really great for portfolios. You can even present things from here. I have my online ebook that can be read within the live binders. It doesn't go anywhere. It just shows everything on the website. So I think it's a really fantastic way to show your online work. Um, there's something that I do with this to kind of update because if you're someone like me, you're always updating, you're always creating resources. And as a teacher, that's what you do for a living. You create resources every day. You might as well post them up online. Diego is really great. That's what I do for one of my tabs on, um, on Live Finders because it shows any hot on any website. So I actually have a tag. It's called Shelly Terrell Press. And I have a tag that's called Shelly Portfolio. And what does this mean? Well, anytime that somebody says you're included in the top 20 or you're included, oh, or someone even tweets because the tweet is a link that says, Shelly, your 30 goals challenge changed my life or something like that. Or I just saw you speak at the 140 conference and I was amazed. Anything like that. I click on my Digo. I use my Digo. It takes less than a minute to add it to my Shelly Terrell Press. And that's a link within my ePortfolio. So they always see this constant uh, running. Any type of interview, I have a tag for interviews as well. I have a tag as well for um, any time I create a slide share or anything like that. So it's always updated. Always, always, always updated. But what can you do with this? Why is it important you tag it? Well, it's because it's your most um, current information. It's the things that you you present the most. You can go to somewhere called diego.com slash tools link roles. And you can create with that a little widget. This widget you can put on a blog, you can put on a website, and it's always updating and putting the information for you. So it's just a great way to always have the most updated work of yours online. It's not outdated. So this is something that I do that I hope will help you with your online portfolio. Um, you can see the most recent tags in mine here. The top 14 educational technology tweeters to follow, um, Connected Educator Month, um, The True Adventures, all of these lead to posts where I mentioned. So this is something that, you know, will hopefully help you with, with your work is a good tip. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and put the uh, where you can find it. It's, it's easy to do Digo. It's one of my favorite web tools. It's great for bookmarking as well. With boobox.com, you can click on here, and you move this bar, and it just slides. This in the middle will slide. This is where I was telling you where I highlight what people say about me. Lots of great information. Thanks again, Shelly. You've given us a lot to explore. This is my slide share. You can do it on slide share as well, but this is my presentation. They can click on the links and it'll go somewhere to that web presentation and stuff. A lot of, what happened was that a lot of the times that I started using, um, I do these webinars. Um, they post it in the forum and it's not clicked to a link. Or even if it's clicked to a link, who's going to go and read all of these kind of feedback? But it's important that people see your feedback. And so these are kind of the things that I, I, I post on. Um, I take snapshots and put it all together so they can grow really quick and they can say, wow, they liked her. 
so that's about it. Um, I hope that all of these kind of information, I know it was a lot, really helped you with you getting your next job or maybe with you helping your students out and saying, here, if we do these kind of um, tips and we follow this kind of information, this is going to be making not only your English skills, but also this would be really great for you in your field as well because you can do this in any type of field. Um, it, these are things that I've taught um, architecture, um, lawyers and stuff that they've taught that said here, this is going to make you just better, uh, more sellable for your job, I guess. I'm not sure. <laughs> but thank you so much. If you have any questions or you have any tips yourself, I see uh, Web20 Education is here, Lucian, and Lucian always has great links. So Lucian, if you have any more, like links to great portfolio sites, put them up there because I know you have tons of links all the time. But thank you very, very much. And uh, thank you for sticking with me, even though I know it's a bit noisy here. <laughs> I'm never used to it.